Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for being prompt back from coffee. Um, so we've heard a lot about digital transformation so far, some great presentations. Um, but I guess we all know knowing what you want to achieve and getting there are two very different things. So we're going to talk a bit about change management and communications and bridging that gap. Um, and unfortunately, Alexei couldn't be here, which gives these guys a bit more time to share their, their views in the 25 minutes. And let's start with who should be driving this change? Because we've heard from chief digital officers, people in senior digital positions, you often have IT involved, but it's not just about them, is it? What kind of roles and functions do we need to drive this change? Uh, quite interesting question. Uh, I can answer, again, uh, sharing what we have learned with this uh, survey that we did with the different companies. Uh, uh, European headquarters or Italian affiliates of, of big multinationals. I think it's a reliable uh, panel. And the consensus was there are two major roles that can really make the difference here. Uh, I tell first what is the, the second most important. The second most, most important is, is com commercial excellence, commercial operations, uh, people. Uh, they are beating them in the middle of technology and people. They are in the middle of different fun global functions, and they are even in the middle of global to local. So being there is a, is a good position to, to really then contaminate their colleagues and have the colleagues working together and, and doing that. But still, number one is CEO and, and, and senior leadership. If you don't have the full commitment, if there is not, you know, the, if they don't have the flag of this change in their hand, then it's, uh, it's possible, but it's much less uh, efficient and effective. Okay. Yeah. So job number one is convincing them that it's the right move and getting them on board. Yeah, you, you, okay, there are, again, even in the CEOs, I think, as you know, you have different kinds of people. I mean, uh, yesterday we had some nice presentation on, on some CEOs that, Okay, they are really um, believing on that and driving that. Probably they even they don't need some roles internal about digital or commercial access because they are <laughs> really convinced about that. Yeah, some others need to be to be to be convinced, and in that case, to me and our experience, uh, you know, there is CEO, but there are business leaders. Uh, we were organized before in, in geographies only. So what was, for me, my best uh, ally was uh, the country managers and, and, the, and the regional head. They were needing that. They were seeing that it was something needed, and they helped the organization to convince the CEO and then go through. Yeah, yeah. How does that compare to what you've seen, Ronald, as to who needs to be involved? Well, it's pretty much the same view, maybe, obviously, from my point of view. Uh, being CEO, I think if you don't set the path straight away from the top, you don't achieve. I've seen a lot of, um, how can I say, verbal commit commitments uh, being given by CEOs, leaders, uh, but not that they really believed in this. An organization knows this immediately, and nobody else told it. So um, you have to believe, you have to be authentic. Uh, but yes, you have to actually capture the, uh, let's say, the hierarchy. But also, you need to help the hierarchy in basically sidelining them uh, and activating the true believers of the organization, which really can make a change. And all of this is basically then making the success. So what is it all about? It's about communication. It's about uh, endless commitments, authenticity. And, and really focus on this day and night uh, and not withdrawing a, a step, even in tough times, just pushing, 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 pushing. And let's be fair, we all expect things to be changed so fast. Yeah. Never happens. Literally never happens. I love the comment from, uh, from the last session. Uh, it's all about the small steps. You have to talk about the big thing uh, you have to set the goal, which is somewhere in the middle, and you have to be prepared to be actually happy about this one, already preparing the next one. Yeah. Endless, yeah. endless. 
Yeah. Well, as one of my old rowing coaches used to say, if you shoot for the stars, you might just bang your head on the ceiling. <laughs> being being a, bit, a little bit realistic, maybe. Just want to pick up on this point about senior leaders and specifically the CEOs. I mean, as you look across the industry, it felt like 10 years ago, maybe they weren't so digitally savvy and they were kind of saying, yeah, we've got to do digital, but they didn't really understand it. Do you feel that's changing now? Yes. Uh, I believe that, again, this... Uh digitalization process uh, is really at the end of the day hitting our daily life and if uh, so if you are not convinced uh, or if you are not experienced in digital because I don't know I mean you, you had not that background or you have your sons that are <laughs> bringing you back and say hey guys daddy why you are doing that is you can do that and that or for sure, the organization, and, and in, in the case of the pharma industries, again, uh, the real game changer to me was really the pandemic. The pandemic, there were a lot of discussion about uh, digitalization and all this uh, McKinsey and Bain studies on where our industry were to get, to, together with the, the others. We were the ladder. We were really behind all the others. Uh, and then the fact that we could not really act uh, uh, at the heart of our relationship was the reps could not have a, a real chat with, with the HCPs, then brought everything, okay, brutally uh, modern and brutally a, a must. And uh, that's changed the, the even uh, all, all the behaviors. Some CEOs uh, probably was needing a bit more time, but then when, when you see the result, I mean, uh, no way. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I think is a no-brainer. I mean, uh, you you truly believe, and in that case, when when there is this change, thought that everything changed, and uh, you have the full support of the whole organization. We forgot to mention the HR function, which is crucial. I mean, when this becomes really uh, a need of a change of the whole organization, they are crucial to be there, and for sure, see your activate immediately. Yeah. This. yeah, yeah. Ronald, are we in the age of digitally native? C-level folks now? Look, not I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know shit about uh, <laughs> uh, technology. And frankly, when I, when I, um, when I hear also uh, what colleagues are were, uh, were talking about, I mean, let's be fair, our job is so much different than operational business where really the relationships could happen. So I don't know how to optimize the process because I don't know, how, or I know hardly the process themselves. Uh, so I need to rely upon all those people. And when it comes to uh, IT and tech, yeah, as you said, I'm happy to have, a, have kids who are um, doing all my iPhone stuff because I, even on this one I'm failing almost. But um, I think it's not about um, being tech savvy or digitally uh, folks. The numbers or well, let's say the future is tech. Is. So, I don't need to know how to do this, but I need to, uh, but I do see that it's necessary. So I'm pushing people and I'm coming up with some crazy ideas. Okay, I had some experience in the past, so I'm trying to connect. And it's like always uh, spreading some fire and hoping that it will be uh, catching really uh, heavily on. And, and this is what it's all about. You don't, I don't, I don't know things uh, in, in this regard, but I, I do have the pleasure to work with an extremely fine and good team which can do things by themselves. And maybe just to add on you, you mentioned HR. I think we need also to mention communication. communication. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> so we just talked about this before. So he was about the HR and I was no, about no. communication. Yeah, our organization, HR communication, I have the same boss. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are not that advanced yet, but I will think about this. No, no, not the same. <laughs> But, uh, but I think communication knows the people uh, a lot and there are, uh, they have, at least from our side, uh, they have established quite a uh, trustworthy or a trustful uh, relation with the, uh, with the people. So, uh, and to trigger all these kind of events and to give the uh, relevant emails and uh, in, uh, information, this is what they can do and this is inevitable for any change. Yeah. And if I may add, uh, again, from the perspective of a CEO, uh, I mean, you want to attract the best talent, right? If you don't share what you are doing in the digitalization and digital transformation nowadays, it's very difficult 
to attract young talents. I mean, uh, uh, they, they need to know that there is possibility of develop their know-how, the, develop the technologies that basically, even simply, smart working, it's led by, by the technology. Try to, 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 to hire a guy and say, okay, you have to stay five days Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sitting <That's> here. <laughs> definitely a race for digital talent at the moment. So th that point about communications, because you know, communications is part of change management, but it's only part of it. And we heard in the previous talk, I think Loda was mentioning adherence, which adherence with patients, which is phenomenally complex. You know, you have patients that know a medicine's good for them, they still won't take it because it's changing behavior. With these digital transformations, you have the same problem, but maybe people don't even believe in it to begin with sometimes. So how do you take people on that journey rather than them feeling this is being done to me and I'm not sure about it? Which of the two? Me first? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I shared a bit before what we, we were trying to do. I mean, uh, it's a combination of communication um, because uh, a part of us is rational. And you need to understand the why, you need to understand uh, you know, the, the, the condition that at the end of the day convince you that you need that. But as important as the rational part, there is the emotional part. Uh, and uh, uh, so-called limbic brain that we have. And that part, uh, I think it, it is important also to make experiments, to touch. So, in a way, uh, the pilots are, the, the beauty of the pilot is to really have people testing that is not so bad at the beginning. Could be even good, it could be even brilliant. But the possibility to be uh, at the table, for example, Roberto was, uh, Robert was mentioning the World Council in, uh, in Germany, in Southern Europe is basically the same. So, even you have to make tables, round tables, with them, to, to really having them understanding. Uh, so there are different levels of communication, engagement, trials, and all these, if they are authentic, they go to the point. If you just have a communication campaign saying blah, 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 and then the facts are going in another direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, Ronald? I think the reason why is always the right answer in the first place. Uh, but we know the reason why somehow, and we still don't do it. So I think it's all about, um, how can I say, the emotions or the, the, the convincing uh, part of things. If I'm really, really convinced, and I will find a way to make you some, uh, do something which I think is good for you, and because you trust me, hopefully. Uh, and this is basically uh, the history from the past relation. Uh, which in many regards uh, we all work on and on a daily basis. Uh, if this is in the right tone, then you can move mountains. But if the trust is not there, I mean, once again, I mean, I know that I need to change a lot of things in my life. Uh, I'm, a, I'm half smart enough to, to know about this, but I'm still doing these things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still not using those apps which are counting my steps because I don't want to know how little I walk. And I don't care about this. Uh, so it's about really someone who is passionate about this. And um, yeah, somehow trust. This is, if, you, if you're not a trusted partner uh, altogether. And this, con this concept of scaling pilots, and we touched on this in our mm -hmm. preparatory discussion. Um, and I love the comment earlier by Chetak about we have more pilots than the airline industry. I think that's probably true. But scaling the right pilots is really key. And is there a way to kind of involve, if you've got a local country, is there a way to involve the folks in those pilots in that scale-up process? So again, it's not global saying, we're going to grab this and we're going to run with it. I think when, to me, pilots are useful if pilots are within a, cl a clear strategy of what you want to achieve. So if you have already defined, okay, I want to do that and that this works, in, and then you make a pilot which is coherent with this holistic view, then the pilot is a real pilot. So you test something that you believe should work for everybody. And then you refine and you have the country's input, the real life, because at the end of the day, that's what, what's really happening. So uh, in that case for us was very important. Uh, uh, we had only few ones. I mentioned two, three per year. So that's the maximum pilot that we do. 
because otherwise you don't have enough focus, you don't have enough uh, support from the organization and you don't really test if the pilots are working, are good. Because a pilot, you do a pilot to understand the KPIs of the pilot. And, and very often it's, it's something that you do because, okay, now we can communicate something that we are doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's... Uh, and even, I mean, another point that uh, could be interesting is and it's what is really worrying me. I'm not sure if patients and if HCPs has seen something different from their point of view. We did a lot internally. We changed everything. We tried to move, but there is a kind of inertia. So I'm, so I'm saying, that, for example, I think 10% of what we did really landed there. And so we have not to stop because that's to, now is the moment that you can really <laughs> going outside and changing really this interaction. And uh, patients and ICP say, okay, oh, oh it's different now. <laughs> and po potentially, you know, hopefully, oh, it's better now. <laughs> is, is that because the pilots haven't scaled or because you think the pilots, even in a single country, take a while to kind of get there? Both. Both. I mean, there is a lot of job that we have to do internally before going on the field. Uh, if you're in, I mean, in our case, I mean, you have to do everything, start from understanding the personas. You have to you have the new content, then you have the new channel, then you have to train the sales force to do it, and then you have to see if it works. Uh, this first round could last, if you are super, extremely good, I don't know, six months, most probably 12, 18. It's a huge amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of this, what I call bottom-up innovation, where you take something good in a local region and you think about scaling that up. But I guess we sometimes still face the kind of not, in, not invented here. Yeah. So, yes, that's great for them, but how does it work for us? Is, it, is that something you've seen, Ronald? Have you, have you seen ways to kind of tackle that issue of, yes, it is translatable? I've seen a lot of initiatives uh, also in my group um, which are somehow work on the same things but somehow their guys are not talking or they are not changing right information and whatever. And um, the thing is, uh, and I just, uh, when, I, when I listen to you, I mean, um, yeah, you, you do prototypes, you do some projects, um, but what we do on a daily basis is not only about digitization. So we do projects on X, Y, Z. We improve our quality systems, production, um, um, cli uh, client management systems, whatever. And it all amounts to endless number. Of and this is where it all gets stuck. Sometimes, I have to admit, when I'm sitting in presentations of teams, um, I'm wondering what they are talking about because I forgot that this project existed, which for them is highest priority. Um, and it's just because they are, everything's high priority, everything shall be changed until, I mean, now we have May, so our good guess is 80% uh, of the projects need to be finished by the end of the year, which sounds reasonable, but uh, frankly it's not because it's all on the same people, it's all on the same, let's say, a uh, limited amount of time and emotions which you can put into this. So it's confusing everyone. And uh, in, 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 in our international companies, let's be fair, uh, when, we are, when we are meeting, um, we are so much tortured first for the performance that there is hardly any time left to make the exchange on, on this level. It is happening, but it's not enough. Uh, thus, what I would love to see and what I'm really encouraging also my people to do is on all levels to mix, basically, because right. I can't be the uh, translating part, nor can be my first line the translating part. It needs to be everyone on the associate level, on on uh, on really on the Salesforce Academy level, uh, from our side to the others. It's not via something, but it must must come naturally, and this is probably then 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 a good key to to make things happen. But it's again not a not a game changer overnight. Um, and yeah, 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 makes sense. And to come back to this concept of the change reaching the customer, 
Again, when we were chatting before, we talked about this vertical and horizontal integration. So horizontally across silos, but vertically making sure the transformation reaches the field teams and they buy into it and they can implement it. So share your experiences there. I'd love to know what's worked for you or, or maybe not worked. Yeah, again, uh, when we did the map of uh, this, this, the concept of uh, the operational model that I've shared, and we put the different functions along the different uh, chapter of what we do. Immediately you say, okay, these guys have to work together. And if you put projects on these work streams, you, you know already that you have to involve this function. And only working together helps you to work more together. Our brain is done this way. Uh, if you, our synapses are firing, then they are wiring. And that's the way you, you help. Uh, for sure, especially if there is a kind of visibility at top level, this project, as you said, are the priorities and not one of the 200 priorities, possibly one of the 10 priorities of your company. <laughs> but, and uh, again, there are some functions that I mentioned before here. There are a lot of uh, uh, colleagues coming from commercial operations, sections, whatever it's called. Uh, they are a bit in this position to help. Uh, very often you see this function in different uh, uh, segment of the wheel, as we call. And that's for the horizontal. For, for the vertical, what we are trying, I mean, again, pilots for sure are, 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 are nice, but you might remember that we have identified some gurus in our population, right? We have done these games for everybody. What we said, okay, we leave to these gurus, which are even local, low level, whatever, to work on next. <laughs> Frontier. What are the more exciting projects? Tell us. And, and this activation of the different level organization also helps in this vertical integration. Or even more, in, even, I mean, interesting, the not invented here uh, exactly. <laughs> syndromes. Yeah. If you do a pilot led by global and you try to apply everywhere, we are different. Doesn't work. But if the pilot is led by one country, and then he wants, okay, now you have to scale, convince your colleagues that it works in your country, it's much easier to find the consensus. Because uh, both knows what is the reality of that country. They can share. If it is really different, you have to adapt. Otherwise, there is, is really more convincing. That was, an, I mean, in my, my case, an experiment that was working. Nicely. Yeah. Ronald? Briefly, horizontally, we are fine. We are, uh, I mean, usual, usual things, but uh, somehow I, when there is something in need, we are collaborating. And uh, this is the spirit which drives us. Uh, so that's all fine. And uh, vertically, I find it actually quite interesting. Again, it's all about communication, you know. Um, and I'm, uh, sometimes I have the pleasure also to sit with some uh, sales reps to talk about their daily life and uh, how they're dealing with things. And I'm amazed how advanced they are, actually. I'm trying to convince, let's say, the top about some ideas which these guys are already more or less yeah. executing. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, not in the kind of system, blah, blah, blah thing, but on a daily mm -hmm. basis, uh, how they're communicating with the, uh, with the HCPs. And this is what I would love to see actually coming from the top. It's not that much coming, but on the bottom, it's already there, and I'm yeah. really proud about this. Yeah. So we're into the last minute, and I'd love to ask you before we finish this panel, it sounds like a bit of a negative end, but with a positive spin. What's the biggest mistake you've made or you've seen made with this change management process in digital transformation? So what would you say to people, don't do this, it'll be a horror story? Well, in my case, uh, it was a clear case for one country, uh, southern, southern European country. We, we forgot the, the work council, the unions. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that didn't work so well. <laughs> no, not a good idea. <laughs> well, we had to come back and to, I mean, to spend a lot of time to recover the situation. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Ronald? I think uh, if you want to do the change in the digitalization, don't talk about change in digitalization. Just talk about what you want to accomplish without having the buzzwords being included in your speech. Yeah. That's my, my yeah. way of dealing with it. Great discussion. We are up against time, but my, my brief summary would be 
get the leadership involved early, take people with you, think about getting gurus involved in these pilots, don't do what you've both just mentioned, and remember that communication is part of change management, not the whole piece. Thank you very much. You're welcome.